Hi, I want to add a little bit to the programming. As some of you may know, I am in computer science. I am a programmer in heart and I like to play with things and explore things. And I think some of you guys are in the same situation. So if you're coming in from uh, the background that you don't have no programming background, it's okay. We just want to explore what's new and all those things. Again, this class is not going to make you expert in programming. We're just going to show you how the tools work. If you want to go beyond that, that's good. And uh, you can choose your learning things moving forward uh, from week three uh, to find somebody in your level. And if you want to take it to the next level, you can do it. So I was just playing around and I want to share my screen with you for some of the things that it may or may not be in the lecture video that you're going to watch this week. So I want to share with you my Jupyter note that I had over here. And I was playing with some stuff and I want to share it with you. Uh, I want to also do, let me get this uh, so we can talk about it. So I just copy and paste the example. I'm just playing around. So I went to the Jupyter node. I came over here and I say add and I added a cell. So you have two options. You can add a code or you can add markdown uh, or some other things. We're just going to get to those later. So the markdown is the one that I'm writing some uh, note for the future programmer, for myself to keep track of it. So you can see this area is not part of the code. So when I'm running this program, uh, I'm not running it. Uh, these things are like a comment to it. It doesn't work. Uh, so I came here, I, uh, I did uh, insert uh, a cell that I can do it with the add also. And I just copy and paste uh, what I had in the book. And I just say, you know what, let me run this to see what happens. So it then they did run it. And then I went to the next example. And the next example, again, you can, let me do this again. Okay, so you can uh, copy and paste the stuff and run it. So I'm running this and say, so, okay, uh, the idea of putting these things in here, and displaying it is wonderful. What about if I just go in there and play around? One of the things that came into my mind as a programmer is, okay, we are doing this formula over here, but we are not saving the value. So if I need this value in the future, I either have the future in this program. Uh, I either have to redo the formula or another way of doing it is to create a to create a variable or name and put the formula in. So uh, you can see that if I run this one, I'm gonna get this number. And then when I run it again, now I'm gonna be calling the growth. Uh, it's gonna give me this one. So in Python, we are using the print uh, method or function uh, to print the stuff. And I'm gonna play with those things over here for some reason. Uh, so next step, and you can see that I'm putting some notes as I go along to see what is it that I want to do, what is going on. So I, I come back to this. I have I can make some sense out of it. So I am thinking here that what about if I want to show percentage? So I'm multiplying my number by percent. So it's 1.73 or like that. Then I'm thinking, okay, what about I want to only show two decimal points and I want to show the whole thing. So if I use print function, again, some of these things, if you are new to programming, you don't want to use it, that's fine. I'm just throwing it out there. It's not part of the course. I'm just playing around. So if it's getting too much, don't do it. You don't have to worry about it. So I remember that when I'm doing my Python course, there is a print statement that we can use percent %2.2 or so, and then we put F for floating or decimal point. So the format is, I'm gonna use the word print, then I put whatever I wanna print over here, and then I'm gonna, so I'm gonna print something similar to this. So I'm gonna do this. So I am gonna do gross equal, I'm just gonna put it right there, and then percent 2.2. Uh, that means I wanna have a two digit, 
with two decimal points. Of course, if I go beyond that, it's going to show for my two digits, uh, but it's going to... So I am uh, doing that. So I at the end of this, I'm going to use a percent over here. I'm going to put the variable. So it's going to take this variable. It's going to replace it right here, and it's going to add that format. So it's a different format for uh, string, different format. Basically, you can say percent %s, and then you can put numbers for your s to s as a string. So you want to show five character, 10 character, uh, or you want to space it out. So you can do those things. It's going to come up later, uh, not something to worry about. And you can see that this not only is going to do the formatting, it just does the rounding for it too. And then later on, I said, okay, what about if I want to use display? I see this, I saw this somewhere. And I said, okay, what about if I do display? So when I do display, it's going to show me this. So basically it's displaying this, it's not printing it. Uh, next, I said, okay, I want to have a percent at the end of it. So when I do the growth, I want to put a percent. So what did I do? I just went in there and I put a percent in there because I want to show percent. So when I run it, it's giving me some issue. It says, you know what? This is not a good format. I said, okay, I cannot put a percent here. And definitely because percent has some special meaning to Python. So I cannot do it that way. What about if I put a double code around it? Can I put the double code around it? I still doesn't like it. Okay, so what is the correct formula. In my print, I have I can put a comma and I can put things after each other. Of course, I can print things in one line, go to the other one. I don't want to get into it too much. That's a Python class. I just want to show you something if you haven't taken Python or you haven't seen this, that I can put a comma and I put a percent as a string and it's going to show up. here. So that's uh, I can I can use some spacing. I can manually put it right here, or I can increase this number. So if I want to add more, if I want to add more space, I can just manually put it over here, or I change this two to some other number. So if I put eight, I'm going to get eight spaces, but the eight is going to include my number, my decimal point and whatever I'm going here. So one, two, three, four is going to be deducted from my eight, and I'm going to have four spaces plus this four here. Again, if you're interested, let me know. I can go over it either in my office hours with you or just to email or some other videos. We can go through those things. That's the Python class. I'm going to, because I save my growth, as a variable or as a name, I can call it again. And this is what's holding in growth for me. Now I want to explore the next topic that you guys had in this uh, chapter, that you can use some built-in methods in Python. One of those methods is called round. So I can use round, and I'm going to put the growth in here, and it's going to round it. Remember, it's not going to affect the original uh, growth is just going to do it and return it. So this round is going to return this two. If I put a comma, I can put a number here, and that's going to give me the decimal points. So I'm going to bring the growth, and I want to put two decimal points using round. Again, I'm not saving this. I can save it if I want. I can put it in the same thing, or I can put it, generally, we don't want to uh, change the original data because we may not need it in the future. So we are not touching that. Another thing that was in your book, and I want to be sure that I'm going to bring it up, is about the single character names. So we do not want to use single character code. I mean, hey, I like C, C++ because I was using single character. I'm a lazy typist. I don't want to type that much. But Later on in the software engineering, I learned that if I use single character variable names, then in the future, when I come back to this, I don't have no idea what do they mean. So I am having a T over here, a G over here, and I'm calculating something. 
So definitely I'm going to put some comments over here, what do I mean by T or G, but what about if I change T to number of years? What about if I change the G with gross? So I can kind of have idea what they are by just looking at it. And when I look at this formula or this formula, it kind of makes sense to me, what is it doing? Uh, so there's two types of naming. One is using underscore. So if you have more than one word, you're gonna use underscore to separate them for easier reading. Uh, you can look at your book for that. Uh, or this is called camel case. The camel case is you start with the lower uh, case and then every other word is going to be uppercase. So number of years. Uh, I was using underscore all my life. And then the last few years when the uh, our CS2 book changed and they brought this camel case, I really like it. Uh, not that I didn't know about it, I was just using the underscore more than this. But I'm, I'm sold to this idea, I'm using this. So my example is gonna look like this one. That's that's all I wanna say, I don't wanna make this too weak. I'm gonna be talking about tables later on. Of course, the table in Python is what we have here. Let me, let me talk about it a little bit anyway. So there we have a table here. This is the way that we can create a table in Python. Now, uh, I am uh, creating a table, basically for those who are advanced, it's a, a list of lists. We're gonna to get to the list later. We're gonna look at the actual table later, but we're gonna be using a tool that's available to us from UCB. So we don't have to worry about how to create table. We just want to get the data, put it in a table and use it. One, I, one thing I want to mention here is if, remember, this is the table, the Python table, not the UCB table. So if I put a dot here and I push the tab, then it's going to show me what methods is available for my table. So this table that I have here, these are the things that's available for me for the table. So anything that you're working, if you have an object and you want to get a method of that object, you put a dot and then you can uh, just bring up what methods available. Okay, that's where I want to stop and that's all I want to talk about it right now. And then uh, we talk more if you need.